thank you for the thank you for the chance to speak. So, well, is my mic working? Yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you for the chance to speak. Uh, for the next ten minutes, I'm going to talk about Abelian sand piles. I'm, I'll define the model, show some pictures, and my goal is to motivate you to read the introductions of these papers. So the results will be stated imprecisely, but for details, uh, please uh, look at the papers. So the Avelian sand pile, as we will see, is pretty easy to define. And so it was rediscovered in many different contexts throughout the years. Actually, the earliest known occurrence of it is an educational manual written by an elementary school teacher in the 1970s. And there it was called the probabilistic abacus. So it's also known in the mathematics literature as chip firing, but it's perhaps most famous for being introduced as a prototype of self-organized criticality. So the abelian sand pile features long range correlations and power laws, and in fact, appears in some geophysics textbooks as a model of earthquakes. So our focus today will be more on pattern formation. So we're, we're gonna look at large scale sand piles and see the patterns which emerge from them. So I should tell you what a sand pile is. For us, a sand pile is just a collection of indistinguishable grains or chips distributed among the vertices of a graph. So precisely, it's a function from the set of vertices of a graph to the integer. And there is exactly one rule, and that is that a vertex is unstable if it has at least as many grains as its degree, and an unstable vertex can topple, sending one grain to each neighboring vertex. So in this uh, sand pile here, there are two unstable vertices. So if we topple both of them simultaneously, it makes this other vertex unstable, and we can just keep going. And then if eventually, all vertices are stable, then we say that the sand pile is stabilizable. And this process of toppling unstable vertices until every vertex is stable is called stabilizing. So if this is possible, then the order in which we topple unstable vertices doesn't change the final stable sand pile. And this is where the, the adjective abelian comes from. But one should note that sand piles are not always stabilizable. But one way to ensure stabilization is to start with a finite number of chips on an infinite graph. Here, we're starting with four chips at the origin on the square lattice with nearest neighbor edges. So every site has degree four. So the origin is unstable and we can topple it. And we can, we're just gonna keep adding chips at the origin. And we see that we're always going to end up with a well-defined final stable sand pile here. And we're going to look at larger and larger stacks of chips at the origin. And this is, this is called the single source sand pile. And since we're going to look at larger versions of this, it will be convenient to color chips in the, in the final stable sand pile. So we're only coloring chips which have toppled when stabilized. So we're not coloring the sea of zeros in the background. So there, there are zeros around here, which we're just not coloring. And so this is the 50, 100. So we're looking at larger and larger final stable sand piles. And then at a certain point, we start to see this, this phenomena of scale invariance. Larger sand piles look like higher resolution versions of smaller sand piles. And this, this phenomena was observed for a really long time. Uh, essentially, as soon as computers were fast enough to compute this, but nothing was proved about this essentially until 2009 when Anne Fay, Linovine, and Yuval Perez proved compactness. So they showed that if you start with n chips at the origin, then the final sand pile is contained within a ball of radius some constant times root n and is contained within a ball of radius some constant times root n. And this compactness was used in a breakthrough by Wesley Pegden and Charlie Smart in 2013 together with a theory of viscosity solutions to show that the scaling limit of this single source sand pile exists as an object to study. And it's the Laplacian of the solution to some nonlinear partial differential equation. So it's the viscosity solution. So both of the results, which I just, just described are much more general. So they apply to sand piles on arbitrary periodic graphs, in particular to the D-dimensional integer lattice on backgrounds which are bounded from below by something and from above by 2D minus two. 
So in the d-dimensional integer lattice, each site has 2D neighbors. And they showed that in this case, the diameter of the set of sites of Stoppel has order d root of n. And in fact, the pegged and smart result applies in this case with the additional constraint that the background is periodic. So this picture on the left here is the scaling limit for the all zero background, which we were looking at before. And this is a checkerboard zero one background. And this is the all one background. And this is the all two background. So their, their result applies in this case, but why, why do you need a condition like periodicity? Well, here's a numerical counterexample where the background itself does not converge. Therefore, you don't expect the sand pile to either. And in this case, the background, as you uh, move away from the origin, oscillates between longer and longer stretches of zeros and twos. And so the sand pile is oscillating between the all two sand pile and the all zero sand pile. And so you don't have convergence in this case. But there is one other class of backgrounds whose averages do converge, but is not covered under the periodic theory. And those are random backgrounds. So as a simple example of what I mean, start with the empty square lattice and then flip a fair coin for each site. If the coin lands heads, add one extra chip at that site, otherwise leave it as zero. And then run the same single source sand pile as before. And here again, we're not coloring uh, sites which have not toppled during stabilization procedure. We're only coloring the pile at the around the origin. So we, yeah, so we're, we can run the same thing. And we start to see at a certain point, a non-random, uh, deterministic shapes emerge, but we can't really see that much because we're looking at the sand pile plus the initial random background. So if we take this picture and then subtract the initial random background from it and go a little larger, this is what you get. So this definitely looks deterministic, both as a shape and as a pattern on the inside. And I proved this. So I, I roughly showed that the scaling limit of the single source sand pile on a random background exists and is related to a different, a provably different nonlinear PDE. And slightly more precisely, the, the result states that if you sample a random background on the d-dimensional integer lattice from a probability space which is stationary and ergodic under spatial translations and bound it so you have the compactness almost surely, and then add n chips at the origin to that background. Then after a rescaling, the single source sand pile converges to a deterministic scaling limit, which is related to some nonlinear PDE, which is identified implicitly. So that the main techniques here come from stochastic homogenization of, of non-divergent form elliptic PDE. So random walk and a random environment. It's, so it's still completely open to determine what these limits are. So we know that they exist and we know that they're related to certain PDEs. And in the two dimensional case, we can look at pictures of these PDEs. So these are, these are elliptic PDEs, so they're described by matrices. And so these are three dimensional surfaces that we can, we have an algorithm that, that uh, simulates these surfaces. And we don't have any, explicit example in dimensions higher than two. So we have some examples in one dimension where we know exactly what it is. But this is a difficult problem because it's also open for the empty background in general. So it, in its spectacular work, Lionel Levine, Wesley Pegden, and Charlie Smart uh, characterized the limit PDE of the single source sand pile for the empty background on the square lattice with nearest neighbor edges by an Apollonian circle packing. So this result quantifies one fractal by another well-studied fractal. And they were able to use this explicit description of the PDE to, to actually give exact solutions to certain, uh, sand, certain limits of sand pile processing. So if you know what, what this means, this is the recurrent equivalent to one. And they have, they have an explicit formula for this using the sand pile PDE. But both of these uh, proofs 
only worked for the square lattice on the empty background with nearest neighbor edges. And this was all that was known until recently. So their proof doesn't apply to this, this example. So the F lattice is a periodic subgraph of the square lattice. So this uh, is a five by five section here. And on the right here, the single source sand pile on the F lattice. And so that it looks different qualitatively. And I actually, I characterized the limit PDE in this case by a different circle packing, by a certain overlapping circle packing that's not Apollonian. And the proof involves uh, constructing certain efficient sand piles for each rational point on a hyperbola. And both of these results appear to be a special case of a much more general result, which is that sand pile PDEs in general are, are conjectured to be described by something called pinene bugs, which generalize Apollonian circle packing. But so far, we only have two theorems and some simulation supporting this. So this is completely open. Thank you for listening. <laughs>